Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and I uh, want to keep you guys up to date on exactly what's going on with uh, the knee. Um, Wednesday, I had surgery about 3 o'clock, um, about uh, 30, 40 minute surgery on my uh, meniscus. My meniscus, my doctor had described it as um, a tear with a flap. That part of the meniscus, it was called a complex tear which means it tore in two different directions and literally had a flap of the meniscus that's moving around, which is what caused so much of the pain. And sometimes the meniscus flap would get underneath the bone where it would help, it would lock it or it would kick it out of socket, making it unstable. Um, from the time that I jolted it, and I think actually, I think the original tear may have actually happened about 2004 when I was playing volleyball, because from that point forward, it always seemed like my leg was dragging. And I think the slipping that happened, you know, a couple of weeks back was the tear the other way. So they went in with the scope and they uh, cleaned it up and, and, and trimmed it. Uh, I got out of the hospital that night and I felt actually great. I was actually walking around without crutches, seemingly better than before I went into surgery, which was miraculous to me. But what I realized was the next morning it was the pain pills, the medication, because I could move and bend my knee more than I had moved it, been able to move it for years um, from the medication that they gave me at the hospital for it. When that wore off yesterday morning, I was, I, I literally had to go to crutches. Um, and then I started taking, I, I'm not one that likes to take pain meds. Um, when I went into the hospital, they got me medication prescriptions ahead of time. Ibuprofen, this is 100 tablets right here. Um, this is for uh, mild pain, and I've been taking this off and on for years, and, and there's two refills of this. This is what's kind of scary. It's literally like a horse pill. Um, this, I don't really notice too much when I take it for the pain, and it usually kind of takes the edge off of it. They also prescribed aspirin um, because they want to make sure you don't clot. And this is the other thing, too, is um, you want your, they call it rice, you know, rest, elevation, no, I'm sorry, rest, ice, um, compression, and um, elevation, which is something, you know, all athletes all know about dealing with recovery. But they want to have you to take aspirin to keep your blood thin so you don't get clots. And they do want you to get around too because they want the blood circulating. And it literally only takes two days before the muscles start to atrophy. So that's important too. Then they gave me hydro hydrocodone, which is a narcotic. You had to give your driver's license and everything else on this. And they gave me like 20 tablets of this. And this is for moderate to severe pain. And so yesterday morning, I first got up. It wasn't quite as pain-free as it was, and I could feel everything wearing off on it because I did not take any pain meds because it's kind of like, I'll tough it out. These are supposed to take one to two tablets by mouth every four hours as needed. I took one, and for me, I started feeling loopy. I start getting, uh, I, I would get like a hot flash, and I felt nauseated. And I think that's kind of what they gave me at the hospital because when I first came to, that's the exact same feeling. And I don't like that feeling at all. I would rather deal with the pain than dealing with that feeling. How people get hooked on opioids, I have no idea. But, you know, you go right ahead. That, that's, that's not me. In fact, I decided we're done with that. Now, I took my aspirin this morning. I did take an ibuprofen even though I wasn't in that much pain. So yesterday... Um, I was having a harder time, um, with the leg. It was really, it, it really hurt a lot yesterday. It was hard to get around. In fact, I probably did more sleeping than anything else. And so I've got crutches. I hate crutches. Um, today, like I said, I woke up, I took, um, one of the hydrocodones at, uh, 11 o'clock last night and didn't take anything else. And so I woke up this morning and just as a, and a precaution, I took an ibuprofen, which is one every eight hours. And so far, so good. I started out using the crutches, but actually, um, and 
actually you can see the good thing about me is I don't swell a lot swelling is the biggest problem that you have uh, with this is why you want to do um, ice now the doctor wants to keep this wrapped up and today I can actually take the wrappings off and actually get the stitches wet so later on this afternoon I'll actually get my first peek at it since then but um, the more I've been around this morning and moving around, the better it feels. Now, this is considered a clean out. This is, you know, a basic surgery to just relieve pain. This is a typically um, a month to six week type of a healing type of a deal for something like this. It's basically, we'll start therapy, I think, on Monday. In fact, I gotta get in touch with them to uh, double check. But as far as being able to move, Oops, there goes the crutches. Let's see how well we move here. Um, today's Friday. You all right? Yeah, crutches not so much. Today's Friday. I had the surgery less than 48 hours ago. So, turn the light on here. So. Actually, no pain right there and that's something this right here believe it or not is something I had a hard time doing before the surgery so for me that's a good sign the fact that I can um, actually straighten up my knee we'll see <clears throat> that I could actually raise my leg up like that and bend it back. Today is definitely a much, much better day. And I don't think it's gonna be the one month recovery for me. I can see two weeks of me probably being back in better shape than I was. But we'll see the doctor on the 30th and see what they have to say and we'll get started on physical therapy on this. Um, my knees have been through a lot and this is this has actually brought up a question in my mind. Thinking about NFL players. The way my leg felt immediately after surgery with the pain medications on it was unbelievable. I, I felt like I could do things I haven't been able to do in years. When that medication wore off, I couldn't move the leg and it hurt like hell. We know that the NFL player goes through constant pain. The NFL player, a lot of them on Mondays after games can't get out of the bed. Pain is a mechanism to protect you. We hurt to let us know, don't do that stupid, you're hurting. It's like you put your hand on the burner it starts to burn and hurt, you automatically pull it back. Well, if you don't feel that pain, you're going to keep it on there and do more damage. And here lies the problem. NFL players are as healthy as they're going to be when they go to training camp. From then on down, it's going downhill. It's really not so much who's healthy as who's hurt the least. And the amount of medications that the players have to take to be able to operate and move and knowing that, wow, I took a couple of those and I'm, I'm you know, walking up the steps without crutches. I come off of that. I can't stand. Let you know how powerful those drugs are and that the damage that you can do from taking those drugs. And when you hear the NFL say, you know, we're looking for, uh, you know, companies where we'll give a million dollar grants to companies that can come up with pain meds that don't damage the body. You're asking them to do something that's unnatural because Tanadol, something that players have been taking for years, they'll take it before games to in anticipation of the pain that they're going to be going through. They've come to find out that it causes internal bleeding. And you think about the side effects. So, you know, this Tanada or uh, hydrocodone that I was taking took away the pain, but made me loopy, gave me hot flashes. Who knows what else the, the effects are on this? I love football. 
I love football. I, I, my body screwed up from football as well as other things. Um, I just want you guys to understand that what we ask these guys to do for our entertainment is unnatural. And that these guys are people too that hurt. And this little cleanup is that I'm getting done on my knee is something that most players have done on a regular basis. In some cases, they're having this stuff done. And three weeks later, they're back out on the field, of course, with a lot of pain meds. You know, you think of uh, the Texans quarterback. Uh, his name escapes me right now. But he was getting an injection into his rib cage for pain. And they ended up puncturing his lung, killing his season. I want you to think about that for a second. To deal with the pain, they were giving him an injection into his rib cage and punctured his lung. And he did that for your entertainment. So my hat's off to any of those guys that just make it to the NFL. The amount of pain and, and medication and everything else that they have to do to stay there, it's a lot to ask. And I respect all of them. I may not like all of them, but I respect every one of them. Even you, Carson Wentz. So keep that in mind as you're watching somebody get jacked up and carried off the field and everything else, and you're saying that he's a big pussy, okay? Yeah, I guarantee you, your ass couldn't do it. All right, that's the update for today. Feeling pretty good. In fact, I'm going to go out here and do a little work in the workshop. And uh, later today, I'll take the bandage off of this and see what it actually looks like. I don't think I've got much swelling, which is definitely a good thing. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I'll see you soon.